Welcome to Retrobot, the YouTube channel where we feed a friendly space robot a diet of pure nostalgia. I'm Clay, and this is a Short Circuits video all about Warbatron. That's right, we've got third-party Warbatron, who is a combiner toy inspired by uh, Transformers Combaticons that merge into Bruticus. This is part four of our series where we are going to focus on Whirlwind, who is the Warbatron helicopter that is inspired by Transformers Combaticon Vortex. So let's just dive right in. So here he is. Warbatron Whirlwind, inspired by Transformers Combaticon Vortex, and right away he looks really impressive in his vehicle mode. The, uh, the helicopter looks like it's armed to the teeth. There's all sorts of mechanical details on here that just speak of uh, a high-end military vehicle. I love the rivets and all of the different faceted edges, the guns, the rockets. He really, really looks amazing. But this design is not without its issues, and we're going to talk about those. Uh, for one thing, as uh, you might be able to tell, uh, when you rotate the rotors, uh, they hit the tail rotor. And, and that's, it's not a huge issue, but it's certainly, uh, it certainly kind of obstructs some of the play value of the vehicle mode, not being able to spin this freely. And it's a strange thing because you'll see that uh, that these tail pieces are actually separate pieces that uh, that are pegged in. Here, let me loosen this and try and pull these out. There's two of them. One for each side. And so you see, they're like this. Now, if they had put these jointed pieces out in front here, rather than having them sandwiched inside, and perhaps they did that to, uh, to be able to uh, keep them retained, uh, maybe by having them on the end, then the whole thing just wanted, would have wanted to come out the front. But uh, if they had been pegged in there, then these would have been able to clear the rotors without any problem. Uh, the other thing that they could have done is just made the rotors shorter, and that would have solved the problem. Uh, nonetheless, uh, you get past that, and uh, you see the translucent canopy, which looks great. Uh, the translucent rotor in the back, uh, you know, it looks great when the main rotor isn't hitting it. And I know that normally uh, helicopter rotors aren't translucent, but it lo sure looks cool here. You also have these guns here, which are on these pivots. Uh, I've noticed that these guns tend to pop off. Uh, that could be because they've got very, very short posts that peg in to these sockets here. And, uh, and it's something that's, uh, yeah, it's not a big deal, but it happens pretty often, even though I rarely actually have to move them. Uh, they can stay right here in robot mode, in combined mode, and in helicopter mode. So it's, uh, it's unfortunate that they do fall out that easily. It's not something that I would expect because of the way that they're positioned, but, uh, but it does happen. The, uh, so you do have that. Uh, it has landing gear, dedicated landing gear, which, uh, which is really nice, actually. Uh, you, can, you can actually pivot that a little bit further forward. You notice that it was kind of leaning back a bit earlier uh, just because I had that position down. And uh, here's a testament to to some of the engineering that we have seen throughout this series 
of uh, nice tight joints that uh, that support the weight of the figures really well so yeah sure they uh, they may have a few little design issues back here and with these but overall the uh, the engineering the joints are still very very nicely done uh, it, it's still a very high quality toy but uh, which I think is why issues like the uh, the tail here and this back rotor stand out so much uh, they've kind of created a pretty high bar for themselves and uh, and then when they have something that has issues it, it just makes those issues stand out all the more so that is his uh, his vehicle mode which still uh, does look great and I suspect that I will be doing some modifications on these pieces in the future just to uh, just to fix that issue and I don't think that it's going to be hard for me I'm kind of looking forward to it but uh, nonetheless uh, it does need to be done so uh, you know even here how uh, how you look at how these wing things actually seem to to stick out further back when I would think that it would be better if the wings were further forward and the tail pieces were further back that would also correct that clearance problem I think it would look better so I'm kind of wondering if maybe I mean the the uh, you know, certainly the pictures that I see online, uh, let's go ahead and look at that view, uh, they seem to be showing, like here, they only show one rotor, uh, you know, or one, one tail fin, and, uh, and then this piece. They're not even showing the other one attached, which, uh, which definitely would work better uh, and, and be more consistent. So, uh, so yeah, that, I guess that was their solution, is to just use one piece. But uh, we have both pieces, they're obviously intended to be there. So, uh, so I'm more inclined to actually try to fix the issue than to just uh, you know, leave off one piece. Um, and I don't think that it's gonna be a hard fix. It may just involve maybe taking out that pin and seeing if there's a different way to assemble it and if there's not maybe getting a little bit creative I'll probably show that in a live stream nonetheless let's go ahead and turn whirlwind into his robot mode so that you can see the robot mode and see the goods and the bads of that process so the of course the first thing that i'm going to need to do is i'm going to need to split the tail here and then i can fold the tail down on either side and i don't have to remove anything yet but we're going to get there i can also actually what i can do is i can lift this panel here and then disengage the wings from the sides here so you see those just pull out to the sides like that and then we have these body panels on either side of the helicopter and this is this is very neat the way that they did it they pull out and they're on these swivels there's a double jointed swivel here that just allows this to pivot all the way back and of course you're going to lift this tail piece enough to make sure that this can clear underneath and then uh, and then it's good to just rotate it and we're going to do the one on the other side and i'll show you from this perspective how that goes actually it might be better to show you from this perspective so we'll swivel that around here and then i'll clear that move this here and once again I'm going to pivot this tail down and I'm going to swing it up and 
move that like that. So uh, you heard something hit the ground and I'm gonna put it back in because the next step we might as well just do it and this is something that bugs me. It bugs me so much it hurts. So we have the front end and that's a great looking front end to the helicopter and in order to transform it into a robot you remove most of it. I mean come on. I I mean they, they've they've done so much so well with this whole set and you remove the entire cockpit leaving just the the windshield and and this little sliver of of passenger compartment uh, and and of course as is the pattern with with a lot of transforming toys not just warbatron uh the hasbro toys are very very guilty of doing this it's like look this part comes off and it becomes a gun and they did make it so that this part rotates around and once again it's got a uh, a peg here that pegs in and then you can pivot it to be able to be held by the robot mode so that's uh so it's a handheld weapon but come on really you, you couldn't come up with a with a better solution on how to deal with that than just to to pull the entire front end off i Oh, it's it's a shortcut. I get it. And there's a lot going on here and boy, there's a lot of engineering and boy, they they did so much so well. But gosh, that's ah, oh, that's painful. I I I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. But uh nonetheless, we're going to we're going to carry on so uh we separate the legs like this and uh then we pull this foot forward and uh then we put the heel back this is another thing that i notice about this these feet are not very well integrated into the design and, and i realize that with uh with uh, sly strike the uh the character that was inspired by the combative con swindle uh the jeep guy he, his feet weren't weren't really disguised all that well but they were tucked in in such a way that they didn't they didn't seem obvious i guess because this is at the end of the body and the body for the most part is very cylindrical uh, a little bit conical and uh and you know you have these pieces that come up here and and continue that shape so that when it's together uh see remember when i said that uh that those guns kind of pop off pretty easily look there it is i wasn't even touching it and it just falls off so that's what i was talking about but uh you see how the design of the body really has this consistent shape that goes all the way down the body of the helicopter and then you have these feet that split into two ends and i don't understand why they didn't mold them to kind of meet in the middle rather than being separated out like two separate things i i, I they they just don't yeah, they, they just don't fit with the rest of the design of the vehicle mode. Um, it's not a big thing, but uh, but it does stand out. So uh, let me undo the things that I did for demonstration purposes. So we'll we'll get these out of the way here. There we go. And so yeah. So where we where were we? We were flipping out the feet. We were flipping out the heels. And we now have robot legs and you can take both of these things and you can just sort of put them up against the back and see I really like that maneuver I like how that works 
it would have worked just as well if this peg was on the end and then they would be there. In fact, I'd argue that it even works better that way. Uh, so when I, uh, when I kit bash it, uh, maybe I'll discover why they didn't choose to do that. Um, I'm sure that they had their reasons. Uh, they have proven with everything else that they've achieved with this series that they do know how to make some amazing toys and do some amazing things with engineering and having these things really work. So uh, I, I, that's not a decision that would have been made lightly, but it is perplexing. So uh, working our way up the robot, uh, you can see that uh, we have the upper portion here and it's gonna need to rotate just like this. So the whole body is gonna do that. And then this, this cockpit right here is just going to close against the chest like that. And that is nice. It looks great. It really does. He has a fantastic looking chest. This piece just, I mean, it's beautiful. And maybe that's why they were willing to take off pretty much the entire front end of the helicopter in order to achieve that. But gosh, I think that they could have figured out another solution. So uh, so now we have the, uh, the shoulders here. We'll pull down. The arms are are kind of obvious. Uh, I'm not going to ding them on that because they still do an excellent job of integrating these wings in. And, uh, and you know, this undercarriage part could be like some kind of a jet or an engine or something. You know, I, I know that, that they don't really have jets on there, but come on, these are, uh, this is a robot that transforms into a helicopter. We're not necessarily dealing with reality I'll give them a pass so uh, so you straighten out the arm and then you need to pull out the fist and uh, I can get it uh, these ones are loose enough that I can grab it with my terribly chewed down fingernails and then we just close this little wing panel underneath and then we can rotate at the bicep, you can rotate at the wrist, and once again, we have the hands that open and close, which are really, really nice. So we're gonna do the same thing on the other side, which actually doesn't take near as long to do as it does to talk about. So, uh, so you can see that I've pretty much done it, and there goes that gun again. That, that's the second time that it's just fallen out. And see, since it's kind of pushed into the side there. I'm surprised that it keeps wanting to pop out, but it do. And there's the other one. I swear I'm not doing this on purpose just to say, see, I told you so, but I did. Uh, so yeah, I stuck. I'm, I'm half tempted to glue them in, but I don't want to. Uh, perhaps what I will do is just add a little bit of glue to the posts, let it dry completely, and that'll put just a little bit more friction when I put it into that hole, and maybe that'll fix the problem. So uh, we're almost there. You can see the face is already facing forward. So now we take the back, and that's just going to swing back here, and uh, you, you can actually you know, put it back pretty far out of the way, or you can just have it be level and that allows it to spin freely, which is nice that it can spin freely in robot mode. It would be kind of nice if it did that in vehicle mode since it is a helicopter and that's what helicopters do. <laughs> and uh, we'll give him his, his gun as he's He's got this gun and he better hold on to it because if he, if he per forgets to pick it up or carry it with him, then, oh no, he's not going to be able to turn into much of a helicopter anymore. So, uh, so yeah, there, there we go. We can have him hold his gun. Uh, 
the robot mode looks awesome. It, re it really does look awesome. And it has another feature. So you can pull out every one of these blades and, uh, and they are swords. So you could give a sword to every one of the other uh, Warbitron limb characters and or he could have two swords and maybe another one could have two swords. And you distribute them as you will. But he's got a bunch of swords in, in the back and that's really cool. I mean, I love that. And they look great. I mean, that is a great looking sword. So, uh, so let's go ahead and uh, we'll put this on the other camera so that you can see him in all of his glory. So here we have Whirlwind, AKA Transformers Bruticus inspired Vortex in his robot mode. And, uh, and I will say that he does look fantastic in his robot mode. Uh, the joints in his shoulders and in his waist and in his arms allow you to get him into really any of the dynamic warrior-like poses that you need. And he looks good from all angles. You know, his back looks good. Uh, the rotors look great on his back. The way that the tails fold up against the back of his legs, that really works. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit kibbly, but it's so flat that it really doesn't bother me one iota. Uh, I really like the guns on his shoulders. Of course, you can take them off, or if you handle him for uh, more than a few minutes, they will probably just fall off. Uh, I have noticed that the gun that uh, that is made of the front of him is really loose in his hand. I, I don't know why, because the rest of them, their hand weapons really fit very snug in their fists, but for whatever reason, this one's just fitting a little bit loosey-goosey. Uh, even his sword fits very nicely into his hand. Again, the, the translucent uh, canopy of the chest just looks great there. And I love these vents that are on either side. It's a beautiful detail that gives him great body dynamics. Also, he's got light piping in his eyes that work tremendously well. You can see here that, uh, you know, we've got off, on, off, on. So there is a lot to love about this figure. His articulation is great. His, uh, his colors are are really nice. The detail on him is fantastic. And I think that that's why when you see the problems like the interference with the tail on the rotors or the the shortcut of removing a, a pretty big chunk of the front of the vehicle in order to transform him, uh, it, it just it stands out. So, uh, so yeah, this is, uh, this is Whirlwind. Now, uh, I, I, I want to try something. I haven't tried this yet and it's, it's going to be stupid, but I'm just going to see if, if it can be done. Let me see if, uh, well, I can fold that up and I can stick that there. And I guess what we have here, oh, whoops, whoops here. Uh, so it, it covers his face, but uh, if you don't take that piece off, then essentially what you have here is battleoid mode. Um, I'm not completing completely hating battleoid mode, but uh, but it is a little bit ridiculous. He kind of looks like a giant robot anteater with a sword. Um, I don't feel like that's what the designers had in mind. I, gosh, I just, oh, I, I want, I want, I want to, I want him to do, do, do something different than, you know, that, even though that does look great. That does look great. So, 
Yeah, uh, this is Whirlwind, and uh, I, I think that it's fair to say that, uh, that unfortunately Whirlwind is kind of the, the runt of the litter of the Warbatron set. He, he's, he's got some design issues, and the, the issues don't ruin the toy. Uh, it, you know, even that rotor issue in the back, it, it's like, oh gosh, oh, I don't like it. I, I wish that it worked. And, and it does, it definitely hurts the play worthiness of the vehicle mode. So I, I, I can't ignore it. I will probably fix it. It will probably not even be that hard to fix, but, uh, but yeah, that, that definitely, uh, impairs the overall uh, effect of uh, of whirlwind um, the the transform of course with this thing coming off and having to be held and, and that's the other thing there's not really a whole lot I mean let's see I could maybe peg it into the arm so that uh, at least he's not holding it in his fist the whole time but mm, I, I yeah I not like him. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to let that go for now. So, um, yeah, he's uh, of course. If you're if you're collecting all of Warbatron, you can't form Warbatron without Whirlwind. And overall, he's still absolutely worth getting. But um, if if you can get him on Super Sale, then that's way better than paying the normal price of like eighty dollars for uh, for this guy. Um, he's yeah he he's he's so good in so many ways. The ways that he's not good just stand out, you know. And I think that's the problem when you have something that's just just sort of okay all the way through when it has some problems like that you're like uh, okay you know what whatever but when you have something that looks so good and so promising you want it to be great all the way through and when it isn't it, it, it's hard to let it go but I am gonna let it grow go this is whirlwind he's all right He's, he's all right. Uh, you know, there's, there's stuff to love about him. And you know what? If, if the whole taking off parts doesn't bother you, then, then you're going to love him. That, that, that's just it. If, if that doesn't bother you and the rotor interference doesn't bother you, then you are going to love this toy because everything else, once you get past those things, it's solid. It's really solid. So, uh, if you like this video, then please click the thumbs up. It really helps us out a lot. And uh, maybe consider uh, subscribing to the channel. Click the notification bell so that you know when we're doing more of these short circuits videos, which we try to do a couple throughout the week, usually. Uh, also, you will know when we are doing our live streams, which we typically do every Friday night at 8 o'clock Eastern United States time. So join in, join in the chat. If you say something, then we'll we'll shout out to you. We'll toast to you being there because we are happy when you join up and everybody else will be happy too. It's kind of a party environment. It's fun. So check it out. It's a lot of fun. Other than that, this is Warbatron Whirlwind. Uh, still a, a really good toy. A lot of fun just with, with some frustrating issues because gosh they're they're really knocking so much out of the park so far on this series you hate to see little stumbling steps like like the ones that occur in whirlwind so this is clay telling you to keep it retro but that's right keeping it retro but you're going to keep something retro, it's going to be your bot. And that's the way we do it here on RetroBot. Yeah.